my mother says that one of the things that was slightly different in me mm. was that i rather than hear stories i wanted to tell stories and you know literature is always more than what a person uh, what what just shows on the surface a girl growing up in um, India of those times has lots of other things also to deal with. So it's a pleasure to have with me Dr. Gitanjali Shree, eminent and thoughtful writer who has many novels to her name, the the latest being Great Samadhi, which has been accorded the Booker Prize. It's the first uh, book in any South Asian language to have been honored like that and that's been a tremendous honor so thank you so much for agreeing to speak to us uh, dr gitanjali shri uh, gitanjali if i may uh, how has the booker changed your life it's uh, still very recent and i think i haven't uh, completely processed what it's done to me and my life it's certainly at the moment uh, a different pace and a different disruption a lot of it is um, obviously very happy my community has uh, expanded my world has uh, increased so it's um, i'm very happy with that what i'm not uh, very comfortable with is this uh, complete invasion into my privacy and my daily routine and i'm hoping that after some time things will be a little more settled I, i there will be good things which will continue to happen but i hope i'll also get my own time and space back which is so crucial and vital for a writer which is absolutely yeah. important i mean the writer just lives in this quandary all the time how much to stay in solitude how much to stay in yeah. the midst yeah. of everything yeah. so you have to find yeah. that balance yeah. gitanjali you were a, you're a you know modern indian history you're a prof- you know you taught modern indian history at what point did you decide is the right time to put all that aside and fling um, yourself whole time into writing actually see i'm very uncomfortable when i'm reminded that i did history <laughs> because i don't think i don't think i was ever in my element when i was doing history i don't think i was uh, um feeling confident and uh, feeling adventurous and you know ready to I, i don't think it was my medium really and i'm very uncomfortable being called a doctor <laughs> as well but you are a doctor but, well <laughs> yes. uh, a bad doctor <laughs> in that case um so this this was quite some time ago and i think i had always for a very long time from my sometimes my mother says in my childhood also you know it was um i mean i think all of us love stories and we live grow up with stories but uh, my mother says that one of the things that was slightly different in me mm. was that i rather than hear stories i wanted to tell stories do aurte ek maa ek beti एक छोटी होती एक बड़ी होती एक हंसकर कहती कि मैं दिन प्रतिदिन छोटी आ रही हूँ दूसरी दुखी होती पर ना कहती कि वो देख रही है वो रोज़ बुढ़ा रही है माँ ने साड़ी पहननी छोड़ दी कि आधी से अधिक कमर में खोसनी पड़ती है और पेटीकोट रोज़ ऊंचे कराने पड़ते हैं पर क्या छोटे होने में बिल्ली वाली सिफत आ जाती है कि आप ज़रा से सुराख में खुद को घुसा लें और निकल जाएँ सरहद छेद दें और फिसल लें बीच से अदृश्य हो पाने के करीब तक की क्षमता दिखा डाली एंड आई नो दैट एट सम पॉइंट आई ऑल्सो ट्राई टू राइट वन आई वॉज इन माई स्कूल एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई हैवन केप्ट इन आई कान फाइंड नो बडीज केप दो आई वुड लव टू नो हाउ स्टूपिड आई वॉज बट आई थिंक ए लॉट ऑफ इट वॉज इंस्पायर्ड बाई इन इन ब्लैक विच वी वर इनकरेज टू रीड इन दोज डेज एडोलेसन ऑल्सो आई मीन आई ऑलवेज थॉट आई एम प्राइमरीली अ राइटर बट यू नो a girl growing up in um, india of those times has lots of other things also to deal with so one being how career minded she is how independent she wants to be so i don't think i gave it the sort of t- i couldn't give it the sort of time uh, i might have wanted to and it was really in my university days that it began to bother me that what i really wanted to do was write fiction and here i am doing this doing that looking for a job worrying about a job worrying about a career and it's then that it began to crystallize in my head it was really in my late 20s that i thought enough is enough and i have to give up the security if you will of a regular job 
and what I want to do is something completely different and in a different language. So the choice for me was really to give it up entirely or, you know, the compromise won't work, I felt. And I was encouraged by my brother and uh, my husband. So that helped me and uh, uh, one day... True, is it true that you wrote your first story which yeah. you have on a train? On a train, Tell yes. me about that. Oh, well, that was a... Like I told you, I mean, there was a growing tension in me that I haven't... Uh, you know, I say I'm a writer, I believe I'm a writer and when am I going to write? So I think it was after I had submit, Or I was going to submit my thesis and I was on a train between Baroda and Delhi. And in the train, this thought began to really sort of obsess me and worry me and I thought if I'm a writer I mean what have I written when am I going to write so I know that I had one of those you know what we call a register a lined uh, a notebook and I just picked it up and I wrote a story again unfortunately I have not uh, kept that story but I wrote that story and whatever number of hours I took to write a first draft I showed it to my partner and uh, he read it and he was surprised because it read like a complete story. You know, for somebody who, who has not written anything and published anything, he was surprised that here, you know, there is something, it's a full story, it has some sensitivity and something there. So he was surprised and I think I was surprised. And uh, neither of us thought of keeping that story, but that uh, certainly gave me that uh, confidence that now it's time. It and I time. think I just started immediately. Jumped off the train. Oh, yeah. Almost, you might say. <laughs> okay. I flew. You flew, yeah. yes. You flew and yeah. you soared. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in your books now, Gitanjali, there is this, you know, there's this really large, wide canvas yeah. of things, of people, of references. It's not some parochial, some, you know, Hindi world or what I mean is by any language world. It's not mm -hmm. constrained. Mm -hmm. So what do you make of other things happening in the Hindi jagat, if you like, which are pushing people down to one language? There is a certain degree of Hindi chauvinism we also see being enacted out even in politics. So how does how does that play out for somebody who, who wants to write in Hindi, who's happy to write in Hindi? I mean, how do you view the two things? Well, um, you know, we are we are dealing with lots of things. We are dealing with lots of things which are which we consider problematic and uh, we have to iron out those differences as best as we can and with dialogue if possible but uh, as far as writing literature and i think a lot of people goes it is not about a pure language it is not about a single language and it is a very very mixed situation and that is what i have grown up in it's nothing that i have I, it's not for ideological reasons that i'm trying to you know, Push work in you. a certain yeah. way. Yeah, I'm not at all. You know, this this is very much my upbringing. This is very much the atmosphere I've grown up in. And this is just a continuation of that. What literature does is um, recognize these, the fluidity of all these borders. Language anyway should not have a rigid border. You know, language only grows when there is a lot of, I think anything, yeah. any entity, only grows when the borders are not, you know, rigid and tightly defined. So there's a lot of um, exchange and borrowing and lending and learning which goes on at the borders and that makes um, the entity richer, whether it's language or anything else. And I think that is very much the life and value yeah. I have grown up in and yeah. subscribed to and I'm happy to continue being with. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is a view, I mean, you are very fond of Intizar Hussain. I've yeah. sort of seen you quote mm. uh, Intizar Hussain, etc. He sort of formally kind of, he was almost in revolt of the progressive writers group, as it were. Mm -hmm. Because there's this whole school of thought that believes that you cannot be uh, policing writers and saying that you need to write for the case of social reform and do that. But there's this other view which very you know, which mm -hmm. argues that there's a responsibility, that you owe it to society to talk of reform. You know, people like Harishankar Parsa have come out and critiqued Samaj, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So where do you stand on that? Well, look, I mean, of course there's a responsibility. And of course a writer is uh, interacting with society. What I think changes from the time of, um, you know, the progressive writers when they started in Premchand, for instance, yeah. is that there was a much more, uh, it was a different kind of context, you know in which they were writing and there was this need to write with a very uh, specific purpose of reforming society. I mean, Premchand has said 
that uh, we may not produce great literature. Which, which means somewhere he is recognizing that literature needs a certain kind of free space. You know, it must not be geared to a me message. That's not the way literature must operate. The message comes uh, without your intention. The message is in the way, in the world view, in the way you are, in your sensitivity, really. So, but in Premjan's time, he, uh, writers felt, and the progressive writers felt, that they have to write with the specific purpose of educating and reforming society. So, they wrote what was called realism, you know, I mean, social realism, which is something else, you know. Yeah. And wonderful, I mean, contrary to what he says, that great literature is not possible, great literature came out of that oh, as yes, well. Yes, you yes. know, Premchand himself yeah. wrote some absolutely yeah. first rate yeah. things. Yes. And, you know, literature is always more than what a person, uh, what, what just shows on the surface. So, uh, many things that he wrote have uh, echoes and reverberations which go much beyond just a straightforward um, narrow realism, if you will. So, I think that was a certain time. Intazar Hussain already moved to another time where he felt there were other complexities of literature, of language, which needed to be taken. This is also social realism. You know, even magic realism is social realism. True. There can be no magic if you yeah, don't refer yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, what is happening is not that you are engaging less with society. You are engaging with it differently. Yeah. And the responsibility is not some simplistic responsibility of, you know, proving uh, by showing that a woman who has chosen to be um, a scientist is as brilliant as a man. You know, you don't, you don't set out with a formula and prove the point and say QED here, this is the message. It comes in your sensitive portrayal and I think that is happening all the time by sensitive and uh, responsible and uh, good writers. They are do continuing to doing, do it in different ways. There are many strategies to tell the story of society, the story of mankind. Different strategies are being employed today in addition to those which were called social realism. So let us not say that was behind and this is ahead, but many more strategies have come into the picture and Intazar Hussain, I, I think, uh, was worried by the, uh, you know, uh, you might say a certain dogmatism which sometimes the progressive writers would show. And I think um, it is a value to be worried with any dogmatism on any side. And on that soaring note, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you.